Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Faith and Friends. Did you see that new open? Did you see mm -hmm. that new video in there? I was yeah, watching Colin and Dance, through. so I missed the whole open. We're going to have to watch it again. The food segments, power team, oh, all missed, kinds of fun I, things that we, we get to talk about here on Faith and Friends. It is a lot of fun. Andy is back. We missed him last week. My voice is back and the blizzard is gone, so everybody wins. <laughs> Good to be back. Of course, Mark is here, faithful and true, all times. Make me sound like an old war horse. <laughs> <laughs> and I am Jennifer Beck. We also have Matt Finkel here helping us out in the background. He's you know. waving right now. <laughs> and we have you. We're so happy that you're joining us, our friends here today, during this final full week of March. I think there's a lot of people happy to say goodbye to any month that had winter in it. Yes. March. March is spring, though. The transition. It's a I lot guess. of winter in March. There's a lot of. <laughs> Yes, there is. Coming up in today's show, we dive into another important topic affecting everyone, grief. But how does God want us to process it? What a great question. Also, some great news of how God's using basketball to spread the gospel message. And we are thinking spring, as Jennifer already alluded to. Lots of good spring to think about. Also coming up today, a special Noah movie. It's not the one you're hearing so much about out of Hollywood. But it's getting released at the same time. But first, our scripture passage for the day, it's Psalm 18, verse 6 and 16. In my distress, I called to the Lord. I cried to my God for help. From his temple, he heard my voice. My cry came before him into his ears. He reached down from on high and took hold of me. He drew me out of deep waters. One of our topics of discussion today is about grief. And there's some examples right there of how the Bible touches on all subject matters. There isn't anything that we experience in life that we can't find help in the Bible for, including grief. Well, healing from grief can take time. If not handled properly, it can affect a person for a lifetime. You may have heard of the stages of grief, and anyone who has gone through them will tell you it is a process that you simply must walk through. But walking with God by your side is a key. Shawnee Alliance Church offers just that type of thing through their Grief Share program, a program that is currently being expanded to allow more to benefit from it. Jennifer has the details. Thank you, Mark. You know, the topic of grief is something that I believe pretty much anybody who's living and breathing has gone through, and many people are still going through to this very day. Sandy Rufner from Shawnee Alliance Church, she is the care pastor at the church, is here to talk about this entire, con this just this very important concept of grief. And before we talk about some of the opportunities that exist to help people through it, let's just talk about grief in general. You always hear about the stages of grief, the, the importance of walking through that. Do you agree that, that grief is something that people have to process? Absolutely. Um, that is why over four years ago we began this ministry, because if you do not process it, in fact we just had an example of a gentleman who had come in and had, uh, had not processed and he was very, very angry, very, uh, very wounded, um, isolated, mm. uh, which is also what a lot of people think they can do it themselves. and. Um, that's God created us to interact with people, and uh, um, you have to do that. You have to walk through your grief, and you have to have some help. So the ministry you talked about is called Grief Share, mm -hmm. and you said it's been four years now mm -hmm. that Shawnee Alliance has started. That is now expanding it. We are. <clears throat> what? Tell me about Grief Share and what it offers. Well, it is a 13-week program, and people can come at any time. They could come on the 13th week if they wanted to. Uh, we welcome people to come back. Some people will come a second, a third time, as long as they need to process that. Um, we have five people who are involved as leaders. All of them, as all of us, have experienced grief, uh, some in losing mates, um, um, different times of their lives. We have a woman who uh, had only been married a few years when her husband mm -hmm. died. and She has several, had two little kids then. Um, a husband lost wi a wife, wife having lost husband. We have people who have walked through this mm -hmm. and so they understand. It's not like we just pick people out. Um, they meet weekly. Our evening class is at 6.30 on Wednesday night as part of our Wednesday night program. Um, they uh, discuss various topics, um, difficult topics, suicide, um, early death, um, just various things that we, each week is a different topic. 
Um, we, again, have people who are there to minister. Sometimes they will break into smaller groups. Sometimes they will stay in their big group. It is a DVD series, so they watch and then they talk about the lesson. And it's just an excellent program. It sounds like it's also a safe place, regardless of where that person is. You say the gentleman came in, he was very angry, he was very isolated, but he was, he was in a welcoming place. So it doesn't matter what stage people are in, no. this is a good option for them. That's right. And that's the key of, of any ministry like this, divorce care, uh, our Celebrate Recovery. It needs to be a safe place, mm -hmm. a place that they can know that they are going to receive help that they're able to express exactly and anger is a part of that a bitterness can be a part of that but and that's why also we encourage people to come back mm -hmm. uh, sometimes a 13-week program is simply not enough that's also the reason that we're starting this daytime group um, it is going to begin april 3rd at 10 o'clock in the morning and to a, able to reach some people that uh, want to come during the day. All right, so again, that is April 3rd, 10 o'clock in the morning, the new daytime grief mm -hmm. share group. And this is taking place at Shawnee Alliance, but it is not just for Shawnee Alliance church members, right? That is correct. Uh, in fact, there have been times when we've not had anybody from our congregation that's been in the group. It's all been people from other places. We encourage our people to tell other people about it. Um, we want to have this be something that can, there can be healing. Mm -hmm. Everybody is going to need this. All right, Sandy, we're going to have to close, but would you, would you be willing to just say a short prayer for our viewers, those who, who are feeling that pain in their hearts, realizing they're, they're too going through that stages of grief? Would you just take a moment and pray for them? Precious Heavenly Father, I come to you on behalf of those who are watching this program and uh, uh, maybe didn't even know what it was going to be about, but you have divinely appointed them to hear this. Lord, I pray that they would know that this would be, as we've talked about, a safe place. Father, I pray that you would bring people to this group because there are leaders there who have been in that place who want to minister mm -hmm. to those who are grieving and mourning. And I thank you, Father, for just the opportunity to share today. And I pray, Lord, that you would speak and your people would be obedient to come for the healing that they can receive mm. from you, the healer. Mm. And I ask this in the precious and holy name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you to Shawnee Alliance for offering such a very, very important program, Grief Share, that is available Wednesday evenings. But the new class, the daytime class, is starting April 3rd. You can get more information by the information on your screen. You can always call us here at TV44 or you can call Shawnee Alliance Church. God does not want you to live in grief. He wants to carry you through and he wants to break you free from that bondage to new life. All right. Now we'll pass it off to Zach. Well, thank you, Jennifer. We are always encouraged by the work of ministries in our community that are reaching out to students. The West Central Ohio Youth for Christ has been doing that the last two years by helping kids participate in the Kingdom Basketball Association. In today's OIO Faith on the Field segment, Andy has more on how the game of hoops has been eternally impacting high school students in Van Wert and Mercer counties this past winter. Uh, last year, one of the local uh, youth pastors, Steve Heilshorn at Trinity Friends, uh, challenged me. He said, John, let's go up and play in the KBA Kingdom Basketball Association League up in Defiance. The Youth for Christ runs up there. So I, we put together about six teams last year and uh, had a great time, but it was a long drive. And this year would have been horrific. Uh, but we had six teams last year, made a lot of trips up north. and. Uh, at the end of the year decided, hey, let's pull this together for ourselves. Uh, so what we did, we went out, recruited a bunch of businesses, local businesses, Pizza Hut, Lee Kinsel, to help us out, uh, paying, paying referees, the whole nine yards, professional refs. Got 12 teams from Crestview, Lincoln View, Van Wert, Parkway, and uh, started our league, and we're just thrilled with, uh, with what's happened. And while the basketball is important to the organizers, they're most excited to share passages from the Bible during each Sunday session. After the first two teams play, uh, we'll have the boys gather together, much like you saw earlier, share a little bit about the gospel. 
This year we went through the Beatitudes. Blessed are you when you're at the end of your rope and you have nowhere to go. That's when God really does work. So we share that with the kids and try to make it as applicable as we can to the boys right where they are. Walking through high school, sometimes, sometimes they don't even care about God. They don't need anything. They got the world by the tail. And a lot of times you just look out and you see a kid's eyes just glued on you and they get it. And that's what really makes it worthwhile. On that last Sunday, 15 students indicated a decision to follow Jesus. 10 said they didn't have a church home. So an awesome opportunity to get connected to the gospel and to a body of believers. Very cool how that program comes to fruition. Absolutely incredible. Andy, you know that basketball is a passion of mine, but how great is it when we can meet people on their level on a common uh, playing ground like sports or basketball, something we do often here at the station? I, I heard a statistic, 40% of people in America are interested in going to church. Where are the other 60% hearing about God? Through TV 44, through things like Kingdom Basketball, through FCA. There are so many ways we can meet them, just as Zach said, where they're at, what they love, and show them what truly matters. It's something when we're engaging them too actively. It's right. something that we can all share in, um, something that we all find enjoyable. And so that's something we appreciate your support with here at TV44, that we do a lot of sports broadcasting and using it, Andy, as a vehicle to reach people for Christ. No question. We obviously know the interest that has West Central Ohio hmm. captured by high school sports. We want to use that for the kingdom. Let's send it back to Mark and Jennifer for more. Thanks, Andy and Zach. You may have heard about the Noah movie that's set to hit theaters all across the country this week. Well, its release is not coming without some controversy. Some are calling it a Hollywood rendition that is far more fiction than biblically accurate. Now, on the same day as the Noah release, Christian evangelist Ray Comfort is releasing his own Noah movie. This one's called Noah in the Last Days. Comfort says his film is set to communicate the true biblical account of Noah, as well as very important biblical message. TV 44 is airing Comfort's Noah in the Last Days. And these are the times you can see it, Friday, March 28th at 10.30. And if you miss it at that night, you can also see it April 1st at 9.30 p.m. This 30-minute documentary features on-the-street interviews about the Great Flood, the existence of God, salvation in Jesus, and God's judgment of sin. Here's a preview of the show. Do you believe there's a man named Noah, like in the Bible? Right now. Well, the Bible Noah? No, I do not believe he existed. So you don't think he built an ark? No, no. I'm very comfortable with my atheism, but I support myths. You think God seen a flood and drowned the whole world? No. <laughs> you don't? No. If he had, would it have been fair to do so? Oh, uh, no. Why would he do that? Uh, well, the Bible says because the heart of man was corrupt, his imaginations were continually evil, and there was great wickedness and violence on the earth. Do you think that's justification for wiping out the whole of humanity, except for Noah and his family? No. Noah, born over 2,700 years BC, was a shipbuilder and a prophet of the century. Many think of Noah and the ark as a story from the past, but did you know that according to Jesus, the events surrounding the life of Noah are directly related to you? Jesus said, as in the days of Noah, so shall it be with the coming of the Son of Man. In other words, the things that happened in Noah's day will be similar to the things that are going to happen during the time referred to in the Bible as the end of the age. In a moment, you're going to see clearly that the end of the age is happening now. But of all the signs, the one prevalent thing that happened in Noah's day was that people who knew right from wrong chose to ignore Noah's warning of God's coming judgment, such as the way of the 21st century. Do you think there was a man named Noah like in the Bible? I did for a long time. I don't right now. Uh, I believe there was a man named Noah. Do you think he built an ark? I'm pretty sure that that's kind of a story. Do you think there was a man named Noah like in the Bible? Ah, there's lots of great stories about it. Do you believe there was a, a man named Noah? Um, I believe at one time there was very likely a man named Noah, whether or not he was a biblical figure and swallowed by a whale. I, I find it statistically difficult to believe that nobody's been swallowed by a whale before, so. It's a lot of animals and a little large. I mean, you're looking at over a million species out there. I don't find it possible. The boat would have to be like the size of the moon. The scriptures call Noah a preacher of righteousness. His life was prophetic and that the ark was a type of the then coming Christ. And we like Noah are preachers of righteousness, warning every man, calling a corrupt world to repentance and faith in Jesus and telling them to be ready for his coming, of which no man knows the hour nor the day. You know, I think I'd like to actually see both of those movies, the theatrical Noah to really get an idea of what Hollywood's doing, but then Ray Comfort's show I think also is going to be pretty good. 
always challenging when it's something from Ray Comfort. He's hitting you right or between the eyes and saying this is what you need to do with your that's life. That's right. He's bold, that's for sure. Well, spring is here, and regardless of the temperatures outside, which we're thankful have been improving, <laughs> we are thinking spring here at TV44. The TV44 Spring to Life campaign is now underway. We're raising $50,000 between now and May 1st. Join us as we use these funds to spread the life-giving message about Jesus Christ to everyone who can see TV44 or can access us through the internet. In reality, it's only Jesus who can give life, give us the ability to give a life of freedom in Christ during our time here on earth and promise us that incredible insurance of life everlasting with him in heaven. Spring to Life campaign is underway. Will you join us? This month we ask you to prayerfully consider a gift or pledge. Also be in prayer that your church would feel led to partner with TV44 financially. Maybe your Bible study group, your extended family, or maybe you want to give in memory or in honor of a loved one. You can donate securely online at WTLW.com or call 419-339-4444. You can also con connect with us through the mail at 1844 Beatty Road, Lima, Ohio, 45807. For more than 30 years, TV44 has remained committed to witnessing the living word. We praise God for his provision and the fact that this part of Western Ohio still has the blessing of a locally owned Christian television station. We agree with people like Renee who say, I'm so thankful for TV 44, provides the light of Jesus to all, even those who can't, who feel like they can't go through a church door. That's exactly what we want to be. That's right. We want to be that open door for anybody at any time. So be a part of the Spring to Life campaign. And we just want to say thank you very much. Zach? Well, there wasn't a lot of fanfare, so you possibly do not yet know the news. But within the past year, Lima's Salvation Army welcomed a new couple to serve in the roles of Major. Dancy Moeller introduces us to Major Jeffrey Stacy. Well, thank you so much. Well, Major Jeff Stacy joins me now with the Salvation Army here in Lima. We want to welcome you to the show. This is the first time that we've gotten to meet, and welcome. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So this has been quite a winter, I'm sure, for the Salvation Army in a number of ways. You know, the weather has um, been quite a nightmare. And with many of the services you provide, I'm sure you've been on call um, around the clock. So let's talk, if you would, about the Salvation Army and how you provide assistance, um, especially this winter, what you've been doing. I know one, one of our helping things that we do is through our social services to provide people with help with their utilities, um, to help get them into a shelter if possible, mm -hmm. and you know, to help with the basic things that people need throughout the winter. Absolutely. Now, I want to welcome you to Lima, as I said, because you have, um, you're relatively new to the job. Um, you've been here about a year, you said? Yeah, we've been in, in this area for since September. Okay. So in September, so not quite a year then, right? No, we, we came in and right into the Christmas yeah. ke um, kettle <laughs> fundraising season and yes, yes. Hit, the, hit the road running pretty Absolutely. much. Absolutely. Well, you know, I guess that's probably where we um, know the Salvation Army um, most is the kettle drives. Um, we see that at, at Christmas time and it's kind of like, you know, that's the, that's the sign that ushers in the season for many of us. Yeah. Um, but you do so much more. You just touched on some of the uh, services you provide for people who need it right now in these winter months, but your services go year round. And um, what I like most about you is that you're focused on Christian principles. You are based on, um, you know, Christian beliefs, aren't you? Yes, um, one of the things our, the founder, William Booth, when he founded Salvation Army, he had a saying, it was soup, soap, and salvation. You know, it's like feed them, clean them up, and you know, let them know about Jesus. Yes. And you know, that to me, it fit right in with me when I, when I first came involved with the Salvation Army. So how did you become involved? Um, I was going to college and I met my wonderful wife because she come for a weekend thing at the college and I met her there and she was heavily involved in the Salvation Army. And through her, I got introduced to the Army, so. And it's not necessarily the Army as in military, correct? No, that's, that's one of the unique things people say, well, how do you come up with your rankings and stuff? And it's kind of that military style, you know, mentality, because we are a Salvation Army. You know, we're here to fight for people's souls and, you know, to bring them to Jesus. So. Very good. So how do you do that? How do you present um, the word when you have 
people enter your doors? Is it immediate or is it, you know, by your acts that, that you lead them to Jesus? Well, I think the way you act, the way you carry yourself and the way you show yourself to people is very important. Um, one of the things we try to do, you know, through the Salvation Army is to build relationships. I think it's very important that, you know, people get to know who you are and then they, through that, you can bring the word to them. Because, you know, sometimes people kind of turned off when you first see them for the That's first right. time. They say, right. you need Jesus. It's That's like, right. No, they need to know that they're loved. So. Very good. Do you have a lot of people that come back on a regular basis and, and do you offer worship services per se? Yes, we have church every Sunday. Um, we have, and hopefully in the fall, we're going to start some of our character building programs with the Christian principle um, to get that on the way for youth and stuff. Because we, one thing that's big in our hearts, me and my wife, is the youth, you know, because they are our future. You know. And where you're located, that's especially important because um, you are on Market Street and then you also are right across the street from um, Lima Senior High School. Yes, yes. And, you know, we've talked and, and heard about efforts um, on behalf of many of our teenagers to lead them out of temptation mm -hmm. and show them that there is a better way. And that's, that's the, one of the neat things, like you said, you know, we, we love the youth, we love working with the youth, and we have an after school program. Oh, good. Um, where the kids can come in, and it's so neat to have all the kids come in there, and you get to feel like a kid and get to be, spend time with them. And that's right, so. very good. Well, we're running out of time. If there is anyone interested in what you do, if, they, if maybe they're interested in helping out or they know someone who could be served by you, what do they do? Um, they can come down to Salvation Army. We're at 614 East Market Street, right across from the high school. Mm -hmm. Or they can call our number at 419-224-9055, and we'll get them whatever they need and do what we can for them. Wonderful. So. Well, Major Jeff Stacy, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you. All right. Back to you. Thank you, Nancy. We want to remind you this week is the week. Converge 2014 has finally arrived, March 28th and 29th at the UNOH Events Center, open to young adults from all around the region. Many speakers, including Billy Beecham of the Passion Conferences and David Lawson of Precept Ministries, also this great event called Operation Love Lima and Worship Band, the Digital Age, of whom the members were formerly known as the David Crowder Band. They are great. Don't think it's too late to get tickets. Go to www.convergemovement.com to find out more and to register. Well, it is the final week of March, and it's the final week of our March Ticket Frenzy. Yes. This week, we'll have a little barbershop enjoyment for you. The Lima Bean Course featuring Common Corn Buckeye Blend, Saturday, April 5th at 2 p.m. and a 7.30 p.m. show. We'll let you, get, let you know how you can get tickets in a moment. But first, a quick sampling of the great barbershop sounds. Heart of my heart, I love you. Life would be not without you. Light of my life, my darling, I love you. I love you. I can forget you never from you I ne'er can sever say you'll be mine forever how I love you And here's how you can get your own tickets to enjoy. So an, an entire concert of great harmony, simply call or email us with your name, address, and phone number, and your favorite scripture verse. We want to be encouraged by your encouragement. Also be helpful if you'd let us know if you prefer the 2 p.m. show or the 7.30 show. The event is April 5th at the Kraus Performing Hall, Performance Hall in Lima. A quick moment now to remind you how you can contact us anytime with thoughts, ideas, and prayers. You can find us on Twitter, Mark Kuntz 44, Andy Lynch 44, Jen Beck 44. Also, you can find us on Facebook, Andy Lynch or myself, Jennifer Beck. And remember, you can always call or email us prayer requests, 419-339-3000 or prayer at WTLW.com. And also, for some great encouragement, go to our website, WTLW.com. Click on Andy's Points of Life devotional. A new post there every week. 
And if you get done reading all of those posts, you can jump over to my page and I've got about five or six that you can read. They're very good though, one minute of inspiration. <laughs> Takes you about three minutes to read them, but I like there you go. It. Before Thanks. we close, we again want to share our excitement about the Spring to Life campaign. Together, raising $50,000 to continue opportunities to share the life giving hope of Jesus Christ. That's why we do shows like Faith and Friends. You can make it possible. So we are excited to spring to life. And we want to close with our scripture one more time. Mark, can you share that with us? Psalm 18, in my distress I called to the Lord. I cried to my God for help from his temple. He heard my voice. My cry came before him into his ears. And then Psalm 18, 16 tells us, he reached down from on high and took hold of me. He drew me out of deep waters. Hopefully today we were able to maybe draw you out of deep water. Certainly a great story about how Shawnee Alliance is helping with that. That's right. Remember you can watch any of this online, WTLW.com. You can catch it again here on TV 44. Let's say have a wonderful week in Christ. Goodbye everyone.